Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Chinese Tier 10 Tech Tree Light Tank, the WZ-1321, a vehicle that was mega buffed in the latest update. What happened? Well, first of all, it got a higher top speed, and not only that, it also was given gear oil, increasing its top speed even a further 4 kilometers per hour, and more importantly, its reverse speed by 4. This is a light tank, and because of that, it reverses pretty fast base at 24. So with gear oil activated on this tank, you can reverse at 28 kilometers per hour. But it gets even better. This tank also got a damage per minute buff. Even with calibrated shells, you are sitting at over 3200 DPM. Oh, and the final buff, view range. This tank now has the most view range in tier 10 at 328 meters. That change alone is huge because it allows you to outspot any other vehicle in the game. But thankfully, it's not broken like the Bosch Ation 25 ton. The Bat Chat was stupid because A, it had an autoloader, B, it had shell reload boost, and C, because it was way more view range. The Bat Chat in its peak running vents could have 345 meters of view range and around 337 without vents. That's still 10 more than the current WZ. Not only that, but the Bat Chat had the same alpha as this vehicle on one shell, but it had three shells, and it could deal just a whopping amount, 1,050 damage in 4.5 seconds with Shell Reload Boost activated. In my opinion, and in everybody's opinion, that was not fair. It's incredibly cringe that the vehicle even had the capabilities to do that to begin with. So I'm very happy that Wargaming has decided that, yeah, we're going to nerf the Bat Chat. We're going to remove the view range. Not bad, like with Vents, which is actually what I'm running on my Bat Chat. I still have upwards of 300 and I think 20 meters of view range. It's still really good, and it's the second highest for any tier 10 in the game. But it's not the highest anymore. And I think this tank deserves it, because this vehicle has a lot of areas it's lacking in. The biggest department is armor and the module durability. It is very common in this vehicle to get shot, get lit on fire, have your ammo rack damaged or even blown up. It also has no gun depression, only five degrees, making it incredibly awkward to drive on a lot of situations. So because of that, the WZ is a tricky tank to play. But if you know what you're doing, I can tell you for a fact that this is one of the best tier 10s in the game now. Like, the tank was already pretty good in the previous state when Wargaming had buffed it, and now that it got that, you know, big buff that it really needed, this thing is incredible. So, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to start off by making it to mid, and hopefully we're going to be able to get the enemy Marat spotted. Let's see. Well, we have the uh, Kof Panzer 70. Nice shell into his vehicle, and we did 358 damage. With the DPM buff on this tank, we can just poke, and we can get a nice shell into the 60 TP. We can also see, with the adaptive concealment this vehicle has, when we are spotted and when we aren't, which is hugely important. We can see right now that nothing is spotting me, so I can aim it on the flat side of this T-30, get a nice shell out. I'm not detected at all. And these are very, very important things to obviously have to your disposal in the battlefield so we spot the kpz the t30 is crossing now and we're just gonna wait we are giving our team huge amounts of information just keeping the enemy spotted give them a rat all the way in the back and no ah oh, we could have shot that t30 unfortunate oh that sucks okay well it's not that big of a deal because well no, don't tell me the VZ's going to cross, too, when we had the shot. All right, all right. We're hitting this one, I believe. There you go. Finally getting a shell out into the enemy KPZ. Pretty good stuff. And, well, I doubt he's going to poke it again. Let's see. That VZ's going to cross. We're going to wait for him to get fairly across before I shoot, because I'm obviously going to be spotted. By the way, do you see that reverse speed? It's kind of insane. That KPZ obviously wants a piece of me, but at this point, I'm no longer spotted, so I can just move out. And, oh, we got the Marat who is pushing across. I'm just going to wait for him to keep going. There's no reason not to, because once he gets to... Oh, well, maybe not. We're not able to hit him there. Okay, well, that's all, that's all right, because we'll just move up a bit, and then once the Marat gets over here, we can get an easy 370 shell out. We do get hit back, but look at that reverse speed. This thing is wild with the level of reverse it does feature, and it obviously puts you in a great spot for just getting out of trouble. So we know that we're not detected from that Marat due to the 
uh, again, adaptive concealment this tank features, which is very useful. Shoot at the enemy conf panzer. Our shell does not go where we aim, but we're not detected either, so it's not too big of a deal. We have the 60 TP. Mm, come on, gun. Come on. I'm giving you, like, easy shots. They're, they are a long distance, but still, they're not, like, very, very challenging shots to hit, but our tank is just really not wanting to get them out right now. Unfortunate, bruh. All right, well, um... If that's the case, we have the VK-72, there you go, 360. By the way, we are already over 3,000 damage in this game. Like, we have done a pretty solid amount of damage, and we have done a very good job supporting our teammates and just doing what we've needed to. So now that the game is progressing, we're going to use the amazing speed and maneuverability this vehicle has. We're going to get to the side of the VK-72, we get a nice pen into his tank, and we're going to reload again. Now, I'm going to load in a high explosive shell, and I'm going to shoot it right at the turret of the VK, getting the clear on his tank. Our team is not doing the best of jobs right now. I mean, really, our team's been doing a pretty poor job when you look at it. But thankfully, we have a, a decent hold so far. We have the E3 showing me a side. That sucked. I don't know what our shell did there, but it did not support us in any way that I needed it to. Okay, well, we get one pen into the lower plate, and really wild. Okay, let's aim it on the enemy E3 again, but this is not going to be a win. Not at least, not most likely. Again, that reverse speed does allow you to get in and out of situations super quickly, but hmm, we'll see. I'm going to try and maneuver out as quickly as I can here. And oh, we spot the VZ, we're going to load in a high explosive, and we get an easy clear into his tank. That's obviously very important, and that does help me out. I'm going to push all the way into the corner here, and then we should be able to cross unspotted. Oh, but we do get to... Oh, and he hits that wild, bro. Absolutely wild. Well, at this point, it's not going to matter really what I do. I'm going to get some bleeds out. Yeah, oh well. We did 4,700, and we did a good job, but that comp pans are cutting us off, and not only that, but the VZ managing to spot us was really just not good for me. We did good, though. 4,700 damage, a very solid result, and a great example of the wz 132 gun. It's just so nice, that 360 damage per shot, and the adaptive concealment in that game allowed me to know instantly when I was spotted, when I could go back into cover, like... Everything about this tank just feels super, super nice now. I am willing to say that this is the best tier 10 light in the game. I think the T100 LT is great. I think the Sheridan and Vickers light all are great. But I have to say, I, I think that the, uh, the WZ-132 one is the most influential light in tier 10. Because you are able to use the most view range paired with that adaptive concealment and just manipulate your opponents. Like, I can poke that Marat outspot him because of my view range and not only that but no he's not detecting me so i can easily shoot him back and when shooting at the conf panzer and any of the vehicles crossing i can also see that i'm not detected and again have some fantastic results now our gun was a little bit wonky if we'd hit some of those shells on the conf panzer we were firing across we probably would have won that game because it would have either stopped him from pushing aggressive late game or it would have easily given me the opportunity to kill him late game either way it would have been a lot better i guess i could have run refined gun but Honestly, I'm not going to blame equipment to why a game is a loss. It was just a little bit unfortunate in the ending. There we go. Finally getting into another game here. That's the one downside of playing Blitz a bit early in the morning is that the matchmaker takes a bit of time to get you in the game. By the way, what do you guys think about this camo? I think this camo is really, really cool. It's got 3D animations when you kill people and whoever created it put a lot of effort into it because it looks freaking sick. So, what are we going to do in this game? Well, to start off, we are going to maneuver right into this position here. And the reason why is because we can get some good crossing shots into any tanks that poke here. You'll notice, though, the gun depression on this vehicle, really, really bad. And you can see how much I have to overpoke this bush to get the opportunity to shoot the enemy. But they're not going here. I can guarantee that, because if they were, they would have been spotted crossing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that really, really good mobility. Remember, with gear oil, this tank is crazy fast. So we're going to aim it on that T-22. There you go. That sucked. We have the car. Oh, we have the 268. Okay, well, uh, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh, and we got the type on us as well. Okay. 
Well then, uh, we're gonna... I, I don't know what to do here, actually. I really don't. We are stuck in one of the most awkward spots I've been in in a while. Alright, type misses us. We have another tank shooting at us. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. I might bleed like 300 more health to get out, but uh, what a cringe game, bro. What a cringe game. Like, why do they just have random vehicles sitting there? I do not know. What I do know is that I can maneuver right here, and we're going to aim in one shell onto the 268, and let's back up before he has the opportunity to hit me. Good stuff. And let's aim it on the 268 again. Look at that accuracy, though. I mean, you can see, especially with, like, V-stabs, this gun chunks out damage. Not only does it chunk out damage, but it's got really high damage per shot. 360 DPS is fantastic. And it gives me that ability to just get out everything I need to. So we got the clear onto the enemy 268, which is really good. We have the Type 71 in front, and we get a nice 372 bleed into his vehicle. And we put on our adrenaline. We're going to aim it on his tank again. There you go. 347 damage. That already puts us up to 2400 dealt in this game. Then we're going to bounce his upper plate. It's just kind of classic Type 71 armor there. We are firing, uh, you know, standard at his tank. And I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say about Type 71 armor. Like, it's such a hit or miss if you're actually going to be able to cut through the tank or not. So, instead we're going to ignore him, because my gun is not accurate enough to deal with that situation uh, reasonably. And we're going to aim it on the FE2 and 5B camping in their spawn. We got some good damage into him already, and we're going to ignore that 2 and 5B now and help out with the T22 medium. We are over 3,000 damage, which is a really, really good result. And we're just going to drive right over here, back up. Thank you, 320. The reverse speed, honestly, is the biggest buff out of the bunch. Like, don't get me wrong, the DPM is nice, but the fact that I can just reverse at 28 kilometers per hour is insanely good. And you don't realize how good it is until you need it, and you're like, oh, I'm able to just get back into position. I mean, look at that. That's hugely important. So we got one shell into the 2 and 5B, and we're not able to get any more as our Progetto gets the clear. But a really good game, nonetheless. We had a incredibly awkward early game situation where their team didn't really go anywhere they just kind of moved like 20 feet out of spawn but perfectly put us in the most awkward situation where i didn't even know what to do thankfully with the mobility and reverse speed this vehicle has plus proper positioning we were able to get out of that spot and we are able to still deal 4,000 damage ace the tank and net 100,000 credits so really good game overall I really like the 132 one. I think it's a fantastic tier 10 light, and I would highly recommend for anybody that wants a solid vehicle to go for that this is the tank you grind, especially when it comes to lights. It, yes, requires some skill, and I still think it is the most skill-based light tank out of the bunch. If you want just a brain-dead light, grind the Sheridan. If you want one that is pretty you know, similar to the WZ, but a bit more flexible, then go for the T100LT, especially after its DPM buff. It has just about the same DPM. However, in terms of sheer damage output, in terms of the alpha, in the terms of the best mechanics and view range, the WZ-132 one is the best light in the game, and I don't think anybody can dispute that. I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.